Okay, so the last thing we have to talk about are acids and bases, which we've used quite a bit in lab and are really one of the things we deal with the most in normal life. In orange juice, what is it? It's an acid. Bleach, what is it? It's a base. Acids and bases are vinegar is a acid. Baking soda is a base. base. Okay? They're everywhere. Are you going to do this again? Of expensive chemicals. Okay. How about this? Do you think those are acids or bases? Acids. Why do you say acids? They're sour. Why do you why do you say acids are sour? I don't know. You don't know. That's usually just a common characteristic. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is though. It is though. No one's ever told you that acids are sour, but you've connected in your mind. Well, lemons are sour. Lemons are acidic. Oranges are kind of sour. Oranges are acidic. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, probably so sour and burn. <laughs> mint, that, that, that sourness to mint is the acidic portion of it. A lot of cleaners have bases. So here is Windex and Drano and baking soda. Bases are good cleaners. A lot of foods have acids in them. So back here is Sprite, and then there's, I think that's old, I think this is old country lemonade. Um, uh, vinegar, vinegar, Tums is a base, it's an antacid, it's a base. Aspirin is an acid. So acids and bases are all over the place. Acids and bases have their own lecture because they are different than everything else. They have their own little world. They have their own rules in their own little world. Like you said, acids taste sour. That is ingrained in your mind, probably. What's not ingrained in your mind is bases taste bitter. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time even imagining what something bitter tastes like. In our diet, we don't have a lot of bitter foods. We consider that bad. The best thing I can come up with is like Brussels sprouts or something. Well, now. I actually eat those. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Bases also feel slippery. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had bleach on your hands? No. Or if, or if you've ever seen, I'm certainly none of you, none of you have ever done this. If you ever seen bleach on tile floor and go sliding, <laughs> I would say don't go on YouTube and we'll say look it up. Or <laughs> but bases feel slippery, okay? And part of the reason why it feels slippery is when you think of acids as dissolving things, bases are even better at dissolving things. So. What, what is your skin cells made up? What is the cell membrane made of? Lipids. Well, in our solutions le lecture, we talked about like dissolves like. Are lipids soluble in water or insoluble in water? Lipids are oils and fats. They're insoluble. So if you put bleach between your fingers and you dissolve a little layer of skin, you release all those lipids, you now have oil basically between your fingers which is why bases feel slippery, okay? 
Think about that, and that's how you do it. And you're dissolving your finger, right? <laughs> we have dyes that change with acids and bases. Okay. Um, who, who, how many people dyed Easter eggs? I noticed, yes, I dyed Easter eggs, that the thing said, don't add vinegar to the purple and the red tablets. You add the vinegar to everything else, but not those. It's because those are pH sensitive. If you add acid to it, they're not going to be red, because there's red in the purple one. So if you change the red, it's not red anymore, and then who wants, I don't I didn't try it, I don't know what color's gonna turn, but it's not gonna be red. Yeah. Acids cause metal to corrode. Yeah. Acids and bases come together to neutralize each other. Basically, they cancel each other out. They are the mortal enemies of each other, or the best friends, however you want to look at it. Okay? They come together, one on, each, one on their own are bad, they dissolve things, they cause corrosion. Put them together, you make water. And water doesn't really hurt anything unless you are swimming in too much of it and you can't swim. <laughs> So there are two definitions, two, two models of acids and bases we're going to talk about. There's the old one, there's the new one. Okay? The old one isn't technically correct, but it's based more on observation, so it makes more sense. The new one is based more on scientific findings, so in to the real world, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of like classical versus quantum mechanics. If you've taken physics, you can calculate the force equals mass times acceleration. In our, our normal world, that makes sense, it works, but in reality, it's not true. Okay. The first one is the Arrhenius model. This was found in 1800. Basically, this said an acid, when you put it in water, produces hydrogen ions. A base, when you put it in water, makes hydroxide ions. What happens if you combine hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion? Just look at them. Look, you get water. You get HOH, H2O. Okay. Here's hydrochloric acid going into water. You get hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Here's your hydrogen ion. Here's sodium hydroxide. This is a base. You put it in the water. It dissociates into sodium ion and hydroxide ion. So you mix hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, you get a reaction that makes water. It makes sense. Okay? He got his Nobel Prize for this. But here I am telling you he was wrong. So what the key here is, you don't have to be right. People just have to think you're right to get a Nobel Prize. <laughs> the problem is, in water, Hydrogen ions don't just float around. They actually like to latch on to a water that's already there to make something called the hydronium ion. Hydronium ion is H3O plus. So if you start with water, H2O, and you add a hydrogen atom, or sorry, a hydrogen ion, H plus, what do you get? Yeah. H2O plus H plus, just add the formulas together, what do you get? H3O plus. Okay. That is what a hydronium ion is. It's just this hydrogen ion that came off that H, the hydrochloric acid doesn't, it's, it's scared basically. It, it's, not, it's not confident enough to live in this world on its own, so it latches on to something else. Okay. It latches on to H2O to make H3O plus, or hydronium. In the early 1900s, Bronsted and Lowry figured out this was going on, and they came up with their own definition of acids and bases. This says that an acid donates a hydrogen ion to another substance. 
it's very, very similar to the Arrhenius one, but it's just a subtle difference. The Arrhenius said an acid makes hydrogen ion in water. Okay? This says it donates a hydrogen ion to another substance. So here, this is coming from the HCl. It's being donated to the H2O to form the H3O plus. Okay. <coughs> Think about what a hydrogen ion looks like. If you have a hydrogen atom, what is it made up of? What particles are in that? A proton and electron. If you take a hydrogen atom and you give it a positive charge, what happened to those two things? It lost an electron. So if you started with a proton and an electron and you lost an electron, what are you now? You're nothing more than a proton. Okay. So we talk, we talk about this acid is donating protons. Okay. So probably I'll say it, you'll probably read it places. Acids donate protons, but a proton is a hydrogen ion. That's all it is. That's all a hydrogen ion is, is just a proton. So if an acid donates a proton, a base accepts a proton. So here, HCl actually reacts with water to give hydronium ion chloride ion. Ammonia reacts with water to make ammonium and hydroxide ion. Okay. So in this top one, just look at the reactants. In this reaction only, what is my acid? HCl. HCl. What is my base? What is accepting that proton from the HCl? Water. water. In this case, water is my base. Okay? Now down here, we have, I have two reactants. In this one, which one is my acid? Water. Water is my acid. What's my base? Ammonia. Ammonia. Well, ammonia is my base. This accepts the proton. So here we have H2O. One of those hydrogens moves over here. So it gets donated from the water to the ammonia to give me H and H4 plus in OH minus. Okay? So that's the, the subtle difference between Bronsted Lowry and Arrhenius. In Bronsted Lowry, the acid gives a proton to a base. It's not about making ions. It's about transferring protons. Okay? And I will give you a hint. Be confident in these two definitions. Okay? Be, be comfortable knowing the difference of them. So here is a reaction. What is my Bronsted Lowry acid? Meaning an acid based on the Bronsted Lowry definition. Water. Here, one of these hydrogens got moved over here. So now there it is there. Okay. How about this one? Which one is my Bronsted Lowry acid? These two is so <coughs> Why? You, you, you are correct. So if you're a guess. Yes. You're, you're both correct. He knows that sulfuric acid in sulfuric acid is not going to be a base. So if you look at it and say it's donating a proton. Here your H2, here there's just one H, that second one moved over to fluorine. Okay? So if that's my acid, what's my base? Fluoride ion is my base. Backing up to number one, what's my base in this one? That one, yeah. If that, we said that was my acid, so that one has to be my base. How about here? What's my acid? What's my base? Water is 
piece of base. This is ammonium, though. Ammon you know ammonia is a base. But here, this is ammonium. Here, ammonium is giving a hydrogen to water to make NH3 and H3O+. But this is basically backwards of what we were looking at before, right? We're going to talk about strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, weak bases. This ammonium and ammonia exist in equilibrium. So it actually goes back and forth at the same time. A lot of times, if you take an ionic compound and you dissolve it in water, one of those ions is actually going to act as a base. In this situation, if you took sodium carbonate, put it in the water, it breaks up in sodium and carbonate. Carbonate is actually a base. Water, as we've seen, can, can act like an acid. So now you have an acid and a base. Water gives a proton to the base, and all of a sudden you have a basic solution. Okay. Don't worry about don't, don't worry too much about this one. Okay. But don't just realize a base doesn't always look like a base when you see it. That, to me, does not look like a base. That's something you have to stop and think, well, if I dissolve it, I'm going to get this, and blah, blah, blah. We talk about conjugate acid and base pairs. When you take an acid and it donates its proton, something gets left. Right? If you take HCl and it donates its proton, it doesn't matter where it's going, what's left? Cl negative. In that case, as we'll see, that is the conjugate base of the HCl. So here is the reaction from the last slide. It's going in the opposite direction. Okay. The acid and the base that get made after an acid and base reaction happens are called the conjugate acid and base. In this reaction, just on the left side, what is my acid? <coughs> yes. So hydrochloric acid is my acid. What's my base? Carbon. That's my base. The acid always makes the conjugate base. The base always makes the conjugate acid. Okay. So look at your acid. If that donates a proton, what's going to be left? Fluorine. So fluorine over on this side is my conjugate base. This is my base. The base makes the conjugate acid. So where is this over on this side? It's right here, right? So this is my conjugate acid. They switch. The, high, the proton starts on the acid. It ends up on the conjugate acid. The thing that starts with the proton and loses it goes from being an acid to the conjugate base. Okay? <clears throat> so it's a matter of look at your reactants, label which one is the acid, label which one is the base. I would start with the acid, say, okay, this was my acid. If I take a proton off, what do I have left? And that is automatically my conjugate base, and then by default, the other one is the conjugate acid. Okay? If you can define one of the two as either the conjugate acid or the conjugate base, whatever's left has to be the other one. So you can figure out which one you're better at identifying. Which one makes the most sense to you? Finding the conjugate acid or the conjugate base? Okay. So here we said this is our acid, that was our base. The fluorine is now our conjugate base. Wherever the carbonate 
ends up in the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid and base pair is only different by one proton. You look, what's the difference between that and that? One proton. What's the difference between that and that? One proton. Just one proton changing hands here. If we talk about phosphoric acid, H3O plus, we the conjugate base is one hydrogen less. In this case, we're starting with three, so the conjugate base is H2PO4, but remember that hydrogen has a charge also, so when we lose that positive charge on the hydrogen, it becomes negative. Okay? In general, conjugate bases will have a negative charge. But be careful when you, you're asked for the conjugate base of H3PO4, don't get rid of all of the hydrogens. It's just one. Conjugate base is H2PO4 minus, not <coughs> PO4 3 minus. You just get rid of one of them. So, here's carbonic acid. Where's my conjugate base? HCO3 minus, yes. Just take off one hydrogen and then reduce the charge by one. So we're starting at a charge of zero, so you go from zero to negative one. If we were, had been starting at negative, negative one, we would have gone down to negative two. H3PO4, what's my conjugate base? H2PO4 minus. Here it is HPO4 two minus. What is the conjugate base of that? PO4 three minus. Does it matter yet that this probably started as this has already lost two hydrogens? If that is an acid, the conjugate base is one hydrogen less. So remove a hydrogen, reduce the charge by one. If there was only one hydrogen, so now the hydrogens are gone. Negative two minus one is negative three. Ammonium ion. What's the conjugate base of ammonium ion? NH3. NH3. So we have four hydrogens. We take one away. We now have three, NH3. Here my charge is starting at plus one. We go down one from plus one, we're at zero. And water. What's the conjugate base of water? OH negative hydroxide ion. I gave you the first couple. This is going to go the opposite direction. Here we have a base. We have to write the conjugate acid. What is the conjugate acid of that? Yes. So in this case, you add a hydrogen to increase the charge by one. So it becomes H. SO4 minus. What's the conjugate acid of that? With, with no charge. So. You add a hydrogen, the charge goes up one. So from negative one up one, zero. What's the conjugate acid of that? NH3. That one? H2O3. 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 HClO2. And that one? H3PO4. H3PO4. You, is it clear how this goes back and forth now? Yeah. Is this going to be on our cheat uh, sheet? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> So here is an acid-base reaction. We have to identify the four things. We have an acid, we have a base, we have a conjugate acid, we have a conjugate base. So to me, it's easiest to start on the left and pick out the acid and the base. So here, what is my acid? 
H3PO4, and why do you say that? Right. You can see here is the starting, there's the ending, it gave one away. So there is my acid, which means that one has to be my base. By default. If you can pick one out, you know the other one. So now we know that's a base, that's an acid. Which one is my conjugate acid? I heard two things. Yes. HCO3 was the base, so it makes the conjugate acid. So you find this over here, it's buried in there, right? That was my base, so that's now my conjugate acid. I look at it, to me it's easier to find the conjugate base. I see that's my acid, that's what's left after it gave one away, that's my conjugate base. Okay? It's all, it just matters on how your mind works. Do you want to look at which one's giving it away, or do you want to look at which one's gaining? I mentioned strong and weak acids and bases. Okay. Just like with strong and weak electrolytes, what was the difference in there? What made something a strong electrolyte versus a weak electrolyte? Wow. Why were there more ions in the strong? What did the metal make it do? Why is sodium chloride a strong electrolyte, but the acetic acid was a weak electrolyte? It ionized completely. Exactly. Same thing here with strong and weak acids and bases. A strong acid completely ionizes. If I put HCl in water, it completely breaks apart. No questions asked. Okay. Acetic acid, believe it or not, is an acid. If I put that in the water, it's not going to completely ionize. A lot of it is going to stay intact. It only can behave as an acid if it donates that proton. <coughs> but if that protein, proton stays stuck, then it's just a molecule, it's not an acid. Okay? So that's the difference between a strong acid, a strong base. Sorry, strong, strong acid, weak acid. Same thing goes with a strong base, and a weak base. Strong base completely dissociates, weak base does not. So like, like I said, strong acids are also strong electrolytes. If something completely dissociates, it's going to make a whole bunch of ions, you're going to have a strong electrolyte. So here is HCl not in the water, is HCl in the water. We now have the chloride ion floating around, and the hydrogen ion is combined with the water to make hydrogen. These are common acids. I think these are ones you've already already dealt with. You're not memorizing these is not part of this lecture. Okay. But these are ones you're going to run across a lot because when people write questions, you have to have an acid to use, and these are the ones people like to use. <coughs> Strong bases, a strong electrolyte, sort of the, the prototypical strong base is sodium hydroxide. Okay. Generally, if you see an ionic compound like sodium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide, something that has a hydroxide ion in it, it's going to be a strong base. Something like ammonia, there is no OH in NH3, but it's a base. Ammonia is a weak base. That's how you figure out which one is which. Okay. The acids are a little more, a little trickier. You just more or less have to memorize them. But you knowing what is a strong and a weak base is not part of this class. Common strong bases, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, <coughs> potassium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Something hydroxide, like I said, right? If there's a hydroxide, strong base. 
weak acid, there's acetic acid, weak electrolyte. Here there are two acetic acid molecules next to each other. One of them is still intact. This hydrogen is still on it. This one dissociated. That's why it's a weak acid. Because you put one mole of acetic acid in there, but maybe only a tenth of it is actually acting like an acid at any given point. Acetic acid is the one that everybody uses in, in example. That's the one you come across the most all over the place. Carbonic acid, we're going to talk a more about carbonic acid later, but carbonic acid actually keeps you alive. Here are some more less common ones. Citric acid that you're familiar with is another weak acid. There's a weak base. There's ammonia. <laughs> Most of them are floating around as ammonia. Some of them have taken a proton. They've accepted a proton from the water to make so the water lost the proton. It became hydroxide ion, H2O, just OH. And then when it took it, it went from NH3 to NH4. Ammonia, calcium carbonate, and then these are nothing you'll ever run into outside of a chemistry lab. Okay. Weak bases are not common. There's ammonia, and then there's some other little piddling things. Okay. In a lab, if you need a weak base, you're going for ammonia. In a lab, if you need a weak acid, you have a bunch of options. Here are two drawings. One is HF and one is HCl. Okay? If you look back on the slide listing common acids and bases, you'll see that HCl is a strong acid, HF is a weak acid. If I tell you that, keeping that in mind, which one of these is HCl and which one is HF? looking at the green ones here, that is just an ion floating around. There are no greens that have a white still on them. So I look at that and say, that's completely dissociated. Okay. Over in this one, this is probably hard for you to see from back there. But if you can see it, the yellows, <coughs> most of them have white on them. Having trouble even finding the one that doesn't. I think that one doesn't. Yeah. On the right hand side. Yeah, the one on the right. Yeah. That looks like the one back in the first one. The back white one is kind of not. It doesn't have shadowing on it. Very very yeah. wrong. Yeah. But in this case, you can see most of them do have hydrogen on them. That must be the weak acid. And I told you the weak acid is HF. Okay. Another way you could have done it, if you could remember, and hopefully you do because you got to know this for the exam, what's the difference in sizes between chlorine and fluorine? This one's big, that one's little. Right? The littlest one, the top right corner, fluorine. So in some, some cases, even if, if you had no idea about the whole dissociation thing, you could have said, well, well these are different sizes, let me figure it out that way. So let's look at A. You say a strong or weak, and is it an acid or is it a base? It's a weak base. Yeah. So the way I would look at it, I would see these. Those look like hydroxide ions to me. There's a, the red is oxygen. There's only one white ball on each of them. So that's OH, not H2O or not H3O plus. So if there's OH floating around, we have a base. We're starting at a base, so you have to figure out whether it's weak or strong. In 
so here I see a blue with three waters, there's a blue, I'm oh, sorry, a blue with three hydrogens, there's a blue with four, that one has four, that one has three, they're not all the same. Some of them have three, some have four, some have gained, some have, some have. So that's a weak base. And these are the same exact ones we just looked at. So is that strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base? It's a weak acid, the reason we talked about, and there's HCl, which is a strong acid. Yeah? Uh, LH, 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 if you look at the uh, hydrochloric acid, mm -hmm. if you count the number of, uh, I think you alert molecules, they match up between. Yes, yes. So what he's saying is, there are one, two, three, four, five, six chlorines floating around, which means there were. <laughs> there are six hydrogens that came off of them. So if six chlorines are going to make six hydroxides, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven <coughs> yellows, but we only made one little hydronium. So that's another almost trick, right? <coughs> so we didn't, we didn't, I'm, I'm not making memorize which one's weak, which one's strong. So if I tell you the HI is a strong acid. You put that in water, what are you going to get? It's a strong acid. Yeah, it's a strong acid. Hydrogen ions and iodine ions, right? If I tell you that one is a weak, that's a strong base. What are you going to get? Uh, that is the acetate ion. So that is a unit in its own, on its own. So you have sodium acetate. You put that in the water, what's it going to make? It's ionic, right? It has a metal. It's ionic. So that sodium separate from everything else. That sodium comes off, I get <coughs> sodium ion, I get acetate ion. Here is ammonium ion. If I put that in water, it reacts with water. That is a weak acid. NH3 and hydronium. So we have NH4 plus, plus H2O. I said that's a weak, it's an acid. So this is going to give the hydrogen to here. So we end up with an NH3 plus H3O plus. Some acids have more than one hydrogen. Okay? They only lose one at a time. So this is phosphoric acid. There are three hydrogens. But it doesn't just, boom, donate three. It donates one, and then you have H2PO4 minus, and then it donates another one, then you have H HPO4 two minus, and so on. Okay? Carbonic acid has two, sulfuric acid has two. We talk about acidic solutions, basic solutions. Okay? What that means is it's talking about the relative ratio of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions in a solution. So if you add an acid to water, you're going to get an acidic solution. 
Okay? In that, would you expect to have more hydronium ion or hydroxide ion? You added an acid. Hydronium. You have extra protons floating around, basically. So in that case, an acidic solution, there are more hydronium ions than hydroxide ions. Remember, these brackets are concentrations. So the concentration of hydronium is more than the concentration of hydroxide. In a neutral solution, it's not acidic, it's not basic, they're equal. Okay, that's just, say, pure water. Pure water is equal amount. A basic solution has more hydroxide than hydronium. Okay? Why would there be more hydronium ions? In a, oh, why would there be hydronium ions in a basic solution? Why, why are there any? And why would there be hydroxide ions in an acidic solution? And on top of that, if you just have water, why are either of them there? Right? I said a neutral solution is probably just water. But why is there this here? It's because water continuously breaks apart. If you take a water, and you break it into its into ions, you get a hydrogen ion, you get a hydroxide ion. But hydrogen ion doesn't like to exist by itself. So it goes and finds another water. So when water breaks apart, you end up making hydronium and hydroxide. But you get one of each from every molecule that splits. So if you just have water, you can't make one without making the other. So no matter how much of each you have, you have to have the same amount. Okay. So here is two water. Two, here are two water molecules. This one is going to give a proton to that one. So now we have hydronium and hydroxide. Okay. I think a while ago I said water seems like the simplest molecule there is, but it is by far the most complicated molecule there is. Okay? There's the hydrogen bonding, there's the ice expanding when it gets, gets large, there's the really high specific heat. So water, H2O, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. If you take the concentration of hydronium ion and hydroxide ion in a solution of water, and you multiply those two concentrations together, you will always, always, always get the same number. If you take an acidic solution and you multiply the hydron hydronium ion concentration times the hydroxide solution, you will always, always, always get the same number. If you take a basic solution and multiply the two together, you will always get that same number. That number we call the dissociation constant of water, Kw. At 25 degrees Celsius, at room temperature, Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And let me look and see if that's on. But that is something you're going to need to know. Okay. As we go on, that number is going to be easier to remember because you're going to use it. It's going to change form, but that 14 is going to stick around. Okay. So the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide, multiply them together, you always get 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So if you have a solution, and you increase hydronium by adding acid, your hydroxide has to drop with it to cancel out that change, so that when you multiply them together, you still get 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay? In pure water, they have to be the same. So if that equals that, 
1 times 10 to the negative 7 times 1 times 10 to the negative 7 is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay? You're going to be doing a lot of multiplication with exponents here. When you multiply exponents, how do you figure out the answer? You add them. If you divide an exponent by another exponent, how do you do it? You subtract. The one that's on the bottom of the division gets subtracted from the other one. So if I have 1 times 10 to the negative 7 times 1 times 10 to the negative 7, I go negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14, which is that. Okay? So, <coughs> if my hydronium ion concentration was 1 times 10 to the negative 6, what would my hydroxide ion concentration have to be? 10 to the negative 8. The exponents always have to add up to negative 14. Negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14. Negative 6 plus negative 8 is negative 14. Negative 5 plus negative 9 is negative 14. <coughs> What about, say it again? Yeah. The pH scale, yeah, yeah we're, we're going to talk about that. That's, that's exactly why the pH scale is 1 to 14. Yeah. So in acidic solution, there's a lot of hydronium ions floating around, which means hydroxide has to be very, very, very low. In a basic solution, this is really high, so that has to be very low. Yeah. So in a neutral solution, they're both 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. The concentrations we're talking about are molarity. In an acidic solution, we have more hydronium than hydroxide, which means the hydronium ion concentration <coughs> has to be greater than 10 to the negative 7. Now, this is where it gets tricky because you're dealing with negative numbers. If you have an exponent that is greater than 10 to the negative 7, give me an example of an exponent that's greater than 10 to the negative 7. Negative 6. Negative six. Think of it on a, a number line, okay? Negative 6 is a larger number than negative 7, okay? That, that's a really easy mistake to make. So in that case, hydroxide ion concentration is less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So what's an example of a number that's less than 1 times 10 to the negative 7? 1 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay. Basic, everything is flipped. Okay. So KW is a constant. If you know one, you, you know the other, which is exactly what you were doing. We went from 7, 7, 6 to, six to 8 to 5, 9. It's easy, for me, it's easier to do that, that subtraction. They have to add up to 14 things. So in mathematically, what you're doing is rearranging this hydronium times hydroxide equals KW. So hydroxide equals Kw over hydronium. So you take 1 times 10 to the negative 14. You divide it by, by the hydronium. In reality, when you do that math, what you end up doing is negative 14 minus what equals the other one. So it would be, in this case, Negative 14 is your top. So that's your exponent on the top. This is going to be your exponent on your hydronium ion. So whatever this exponent is has to equal the exponent <coughs> on your OH minus. Okay. It's the same little subtraction you were doing. It's just more complicated this way. Okay. But 
if you're not confident doing that subtraction in your head, you can always write out H3O plus times OH minus equals the W, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. You have a, a number, two variables. One of them has to be given to you. Solve for the other one. Do it in your calculator, and it'll just do it for you. Okay, But you have to be confident when you put it in your calculator, it's going to do the calculation correctly, the whole order of operations thing. Okay? That's a really easy place to mess up on your calculator. If you know your OH concentration, you just put that under your under KW, divide that over, solve for H3O plus. Yellow. You couldn't see it? It's been printed out. It's been No? No. So, let's do this. If hydronium ion concentration is 10 to the negative fifth, what's my hydroxide ion concentration? Negative nine. You probably just did that with a little subtraction thingy. They have to add up to negative 14, right? But you could also do it this way. 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 10 to the negative 5th. If you plug that into here, do it in calculator, you'll get 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Okay? That's my hydrogen, hydronium ion concentration. What's my hydroxide? Negative 2. If that's my hydroxide, What's my hydronium? Negative eight. What's my what's my hydronium? Negative two. Okay. These exponents are not always whole numbers, though. Of course not. Okay. So things are going to get trickier. Okay. But we can't use. Let me rephrase. Well, let me rephrase that. You won't see an exponent as it's not a whole number, but when we transform this into pH, it's not going to be a whole number. Because what happens is this one times something is not always one. If you put a two here, if you put two times 10 to the negative 12, that is not simple mind, mind math to figure out your hydroxide ion concentration. It's, when at first glance it seems like it, but you try it, you're just gonna beat your head against the wall, okay? That you're going to have to do when you're going to get a concussion on the chair. <laughs> so, here are some solutions. You have to calculate the concentration of hydronium ion in that solution, and then we have to say, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So already, here's one that's a two. It's not a one, right? So, we have this, we have this equation, right? Hydronium times hydroxide equals 1 times 10 to the negative 14. We are given OH minus, so I would write 1 times 10 to the negative 14 equals hydronium ion concentration and then plug in my hydroxide. 2 times 10 to the negative 8. And then it's just a division. That divided by that. And what did you get? Yeah, 
Are you good? Yeah. Okay. So you can check this. Does it make sense? 2 times 10 to the negative 8 isn't all that different than 1 times 10 to the negative 8. So if it was a 1 times 10 to the negative 8, what would my hydronium ions be? That's one of those easy ones again. Okay, negative 8 plus what equals negative 14? Negative 6. So our answer should be close to 1 times 10 to the negative 6. 5 times 10 to the negative 7 is close to 1 times 10 to the negative 6. If you got something times 10 to the negative 2, you're not, you're not right. That exponent has to be within 1 of it. Mathematically, if you went through, you figure it has to be within 1. Okay. So it makes sense. So we're going to go with it. Bottom one. Here is OH minus. It's 0.035 molar. Okay. Same problem, right? We're given hydroxide ion concentration in molarity. Plug it in. Okay. It looks different because it's not in scientific notation. But it's the same exact problem. So on the, on the second one, what do you get? check it. Does it make sense? We don't have an exponent there, but we know how to put that in the scientific notation to get the exponent. So if you put that in the scientific notation, what's the exponent? Negative 2. Negative 2. So what should your answer exponent be close to? Negative 12. Negative 12. So if here we change that to 3.5 times 10 to the negative 2, if we just lop off and ignore that 3.5, we have 10 to the negative 2 plus 10 to the negative 12 is going to give me negative 14. So our answer should be close to negative 12 is negative 13. It's within 1. It makes sense. We'll go with it. Now, I'm going to go back and fix my sig figs, because I forgot sig figs. Mm -hmm. So, on the bus second one, there's only two sig figs. So that's nine. The first one had two. Nobody still has it on their calculator. We'll pretend it was a zero. It was zero. Was it really? Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> so, on the first one, there's, there's two parts of this problem. Don't miss the second part. Second part says identify each solution as acidic, basic, or neutral. This is the hydro hydronium <coughs> ion concentration of the first one. That's my hydroxide ion concentration. Is it acidic, basic, or neutral? Acidic. Why do you say acidic? 10 to the negative 7 is greater. Correct. You're looking for the one that's higher. The hydro hydronium ion concentration is higher, it's acidic. The hydroxide ion concentration is higher, it's basic. If they're completely equal, it's neutral. They're clearly not equal, they're not the same number. 10 to the negative 7 is a larger number than 10 to the negative 8. Hydronium is larger. In this one, here's my hydronium, here's my hydroxide. Acidic, basic, neutral. It definitely is. Basic. <laughs> That's times 10 to the negative 2, that's 10 to the negative 13, okay? Negative 2 is larger than negative 13. Don't just skip over that thought, okay? Somebody's going to make that mistake in a bad time, okay? So here's some more. 
and you have 0.1 molar HCl. This is taking it one step back. We're not given hydronium ion concentration here. We're not given hydroxide ion concentration. All we're given is a concentration of HCl. How can we do this? Point one. Yeah. Yeah. So what he's saying is hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. It completely dissociates. So if you start with 0.1 molar HCl, you're going to get 0.1 molar H plus, which means you're going to get 0.1 molar hydronium. Okay? So you can just take that 0.1 and stick it right in there. Okay? So that, that's the first part. We can to my <coughs> hydronium and hydroxide. The hydronium is easy. It's 0.1. So then we stick 0.1 in there, solve for hydroxide, and we get something else. So what is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 0.1? 1, to 1 times 10 to the negative 13th. And the second one, I have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Again, I'm not given either concentration. But what do I know? Base. It's a base. It's a strong base. It has a hydroxide in it. So it's going to completely dissociate. So if I have 0.1 molar NaOH, I'm going to get 0.1 molar OH. So I can stick 0.1 in there. Hydroxide ion is done already. And then I do the same exact math. It's the same exact problem, right? You're just plugging the point one for the, for the other one. Which means, what is my hydronium ion concentration? One to the negative One to the negative 13. Okay. These, you put it in the scientific notation, what is the exponent? Negative one. Negative one. Negative 1 plus negative 13 is negative 14. Okay. Here's another one. It's HCl again. So what do I do with this number? 1 times 10 to the negative 4. Divide 2 to the 4. Yeah, 4. So I said Einstein counts, right? So Einstein, Einstein takes a little finger or a pen and counts. That's how you do it. If you try to do it with your eyes, you're going to miss a 0. The zeros just blend together. Right? So that's 1 times 10 to the negative 4. What do I do with that 1 times 10 to the negative 4? Divide 1 times 10 to the negative 14 by it. Right? And what does that give me? 1 times 10 to the negative 10. And what is that? That's the amount of OH. You're right. So, again, it was hydrochloric acid. It's a strong acid. So this number is my hydronium ion concentration. I just take that, I copy and paste it, and I have half my question right. Then I take it, I stick it in here, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 4th is 1 times 10 to the negative 10th. Right? If that's 4, 4 plus 10 is 14. <coughs> Now we get to our pH scale. Okay. The pH takes the hydronium ion concentration and puts it into a number that's easier to work with. Something times something to the something is an awkward something. Okay. If you can take that and transform it into a number in the realm that we normally deal with, 1 through 14, it's a whole lot easier to work with. <clears throat> so pH is negative log H3O plus. And this is base 10 log. So don't to make sure you're not using the natural log, the N, LN, on your calculator, because say it's log properly. You take the hydronium ion concentration, 
take the log of it, make it negative. And if you've taken, I guess, log of algebra probably. If you take a log, what a log does is it takes the exponent and makes it a number. <laughs> what does a log mean? Burns. <laughs> 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 A log takes an exponent and makes it a non-exponent. Okay, so if our exponents have to add up to negative 14, we take that negative 14, make it a number, not an exponent. We had negative negative 14. We now have positive 14, which means we have two numbers that are going to have to add up to 14. Okay, it's the same math, but it's easier math. You're not dealing with negative numbers, you're dealing with positive numbers. So the, the number that's higher is higher than the number that's lower. Okay? So, but I guess what I'm saying is, in this case, 5 is higher than 4. But if you're negative, negative 4 is, is a larger number than negative 5. So you avoid that whole trickery thing. Yeah. So, what is the pH? Of, 10 to the, of a 10 to the negative first molar hydronium ion solution. One. One. I would try, if you have a calculator, put that in your calculator now to make sure you know how to do this. If you get anything other than one. Um, how do you do it in the first place? Because then forever since I played the part. How do you put it in the calculator? Yeah. Uh, if it were, do you have a graphing calculator? Yeah. I would put negative log, and then it's probably going to give you the first half of a parenthesis. Oh, okay. Put 10 to the negative 1 okay. in that parenthesis, okay. close the parenthesis, and hit enter. So it would oh, probably yeah. look like uh, yeah. negative log of 10 to the negative 1, maybe, depending on how your calculator does it. Yep. Okay. So if you put that in there, you should get one. Okay. Holden didn't put it into his calculator. How did you do this? Right. So, but in your mind, what did you do? How did you transform that in your mind? Right. The log takes the exponent, moves it down, but it's negative log, so you change the sign. You took negative one, made it positive, and he was done. Here's another one. 10 to the negative fifth. What's the pH of that? Five. Five. Okay. You should be able to put that in your calculator and get five. Some of these, when it's not one times this, you're not going to be able to do it in your head. If you can, you belong up here and I belong back there. Okay? So make sure, use these as, te as a test to make sure you know how to put it into your calculator. Here's this one. What's the pH here? Seven. How about that? Eleven. If it's one times it, it's easy. Just take the exponent and make it positive. You're done. So here's 1, 5, 7, and 11. Let's look at this one. If my hydronium ion concentration is 10, 10 to the negative 1, what does my hydroxide ion concentration have to be? Negative 13. Which one of those is the larger number? Negative 1 times 10 to the negative 1, or 10 to the negative 13? Negative 1. <coughs> negative 1. So, is there more hydronium ions, or is there more hyd hydroxide? Hydronium. hydronium, which means it is acidic, basic, or neutral. <coughs> acidic. So, if pH 1 is acidic, if you do it with 10 to negative 5, your hydroxide ion concentration is negative 9. Is that acidic or basic? Acidic. If 10 to negative 7, what is my hydroxide ion concentration? Negative seven. negative 7. 
acidic, basic, neutral. 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 If my hydronium is 10 to the negative 11, what's my hydroxide? One. Negative three. Negative three. Which is larger? Negative three. Negative three, acidic, basic, neutral. Basic. basic. So, on the pH scale, less than seven is acidic, seven is neutral, greater than seven is basic. That's something you, you're going to use a lot, okay? So make sure you know that. that. That was simple enough. If you can remember seven is neutral, then you remember one or the other. I, I tend to focus on the acids. Acids are low pH. Here's the pH scale. Generally, pH values fall between 1 and 14. They do not have to. Okay? If I have 1 molar HCl, what is my pH? If, if my concentrated HCl is 1, what is my concentration of hydronium? One. one. What's the negative log of one? Do it. Log of one is zero. Zero is not within one fourteenth. But a one molar HCl solution, you were using a six molar HCl solution in lab last week. That's the stuff to burn your hand. Yeah. So clearly, six. If one molar is, is less than one, if that's zero, six molar is actually going to have a negative pH. Okay. Normally, we deal with one to fourteen, but if you see something that's less than one or more than fourteen, don't flip out. Okay. I had, I had a chemistry professor in college. He did that in half the class dipped out on an exam. Because he was asking, what is the concentration of one molar HCl? Or he called it Hickle. <laughs> he called it Hickle. And half the class on the exam is zero. zero. You can't have zero. And so they said, I don't know what I'm doing. And none of the other half of the class said, rather than being smart and saying, well, I got zero, I don't think that's right. I probably did something small wrong, showed the work. I'm just going to completely change what I did, make something up, and get zero credit. Okay. Either way, you got zero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, either way, you got zero. <laughs> so don't freak out if it doesn't fall between 1 and 14. Okay. So here are some things. That, where they fall on this pH scale. Pure water is 7. Okay. If you get tap water, or even deionized water, you measure it, it's not going to be 7 because there is, as we learned, carbon dioxide dissolved in. Okay? So truly pure water is seven. Milk, urine, rainwater, beer, vinegar, lemon juice, stomach acid are all acidic. Okay? Go up, blood, seawater, detergent, milk and magnesia, ammonia, lye, lye, I believe, is a form of sodium hydroxide, I think it's potassium hydroxide from burning wood and stuff you get hydroxide solution compounds, and then sodium hydroxide. Those are bases. Those have high pH. What is, that's exactly, that's what we're talking about here. What is the pH of a two molar HCl solution? So you can't do that in your head. Maybe Holden can. No. No? <laughs> Negative 0.3? No, one whole bunch of So it, it makes sense. If we said one was zero, mm -hmm. this is more acidic, so if the pH has to be lower than zero, so you're in a negative number. So it makes sense. So you trust what you got, and you go with it. <laughs> now let's look at this. pH 8 is there. There is 
my hydronium ion concentration, 10 to the negative 8. pH 9 is 10 to the negative 9. By what factor is my hydronium ion concentration changing between those two numbers? It's an exponent. So, 10. 10 to the negative 9 is a factor of 10 different than 10 to the negative 8. So the pH scale goes by factors of 10. A pH 2 solution is 10 times more acidic than a pH 3. If you're familiar with the Richter scale, the Richter scale works the same way. That's a log. That's why a Richter scale 5 is so much more destructive than a P Richter scale 4. It's 10 times stronger. Okay? Which really makes you wonder how strong a Richter scale of 7 or 8 is when a 1 or 2 will shake a building. Right? You're, there you're talking millions of times stronger. Millions? Eight. Yeah, 8 would be 7. That's 10 million times stronger. That's really strong. Right? So remember, pHs change by a factor of 10. So what's the difference between a 4 and a 2? 100. There's two, there's two tens. So 10 times 10 <laughs> is 100. <laughs> so here we have a soil sample. Okay? We determine that the hydroxide ion concentration is 5 times 10 to the negative 7. What is the pH of the soil? And before you go taking the negative log of that, stop and think. pH is negative log of hydronium ion concentration. We were given hydroxide ion concentration. You have to figure out the hydronium first, then you can figure out the pH. Now we can stop and check. Does this make sense? If we ignored the 5, we have 10 to the negative 7, right? So what does the other one have to be? If this one is 10 to the negative 7, the, the hydronium ion concentration has to be close to times 10 to the negative 7. We're within 1, so we go with it. That is pretty darn close to 1 times 10 to the negative 7. If it was 1 times 10 negative 7, we have a neutral solution, which means our pH would be 7. We're not far from neutral, we're not far from neutral. So it all makes sense. So we go with it. Okay. Is this acidic or is it basic? Basic. 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 <clears throat> More than 7. <laughs> This is wrong. This one's wrong. This is more, there's more hydroxide than hydronium. So it has to be higher than 7. So go with ours.
Everybody got it, Mark? So because they had this wrong, this one's wrong. It's basic. Yes. Let's take a break. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start out at when the big hand's on the eight on this clock. <laughs> So we have point zero 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 eight five molar HCl. What's the pH of that? <laughs> Speaking of completely inappropriate, not correct answers, some people on the on the the homework, the big homework, so now some of them weren't multiple choice. There are people that put with put the A. <laughs> and, and I don't know. Now I need to make sure that was me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they were being funny or if they were just writing answers and they didn't realize it wasn't a multiple choice. They started off with the word A and went, I have no idea. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. So pH of 0 0.00085 molar HCl. Oh no. 3.07. Makes sense. I mean, this is HCl, so you would expect, expect it to be acidic. Mm -hmm. You get three point something. This isn't incredibly concentrated, so you shouldn't have a zero or a one or something. So it makes sense. It's negative log at point zero 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 eight five. That's it. Does everybody get three point three? So here is point zero one molar NaOH. <laughs> The base. So, in scientific notation, what is this number? One, one, point point zero. Zero. one times ten to the negative, negative, negative two. two. So, what is the hydronium? One, e one times ten to the negative twelve. Negative log of that is that one's a. a Head math one. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> okay. This one's tricky. We didn't really talk. We talked talk about polytroic acids. H2SO4 is one of them. So there are two hydrogens. What is the hydronium ion concentration for this one? Two. <clears throat> the one molar of this, but you get two hydrogens for every one of these. So the hydronium ion is 2 molar. So you take negative log of 2, which was, I think, ne negative 0.3 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. so you, you'll mostly be responsible for monodromic acids. I wouldn't worry about these thinking up on you too much. There's also pOH. Okay, and th this is actually going to make your life easier rather than more difficult. pOH is negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so same math, just instead of doing hydronium ion concentration, <laughs> it's hydroxide ion concentration. pH plus pOH is 14. Okay? Which means if the question asks for pH and you're given OH minus, you can do the negative log on that, get a reasonable number, and do reasonable math to find the pH. Okay? You don't have to do that whole times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 3.8 times 10 to the negative 8, something like that. Okay? You can get yourself into real numbers and do it that way. So if we go back and you take this one, and you're going to go, you have to find the pH. But instead of going from hydroxide ion concentration to hydronium ion concentration to pH, to me it's easier to go from this to pOH to pH. So what is the pOH of that? 
is 10 to the negative 2. Take negative log of that is 2. If the pH plus the pOH is 14, and the pA, pOH is 2, what's the pH? 12. Simpler numbers. And to me, though, that's simpler math. So these are hydrangeas. Hydrangeas actually have different colors. It's hydrangeas, right? Okay. There's different colors depending on the soil pH. Okay. So we can take a pH, and you can actually judge pH, soil pH based on <coughs> hydrangea color. So if you can get the pH from the hydrangea color. You can undo that negative log, okay? Which means you can go from pH to hydronium ion concentration. You can go from pOH to hydroxide ion concentration, okay? Mathematically, how you undo a pH or a pOH is 10 to the negative pH or 10 to the negative pOH, okay? You, some people, some calculators may actually call it an anti, that's an anti-log, okay? It's just 10 to the number, and you're going to put in negative whatever the pH is, okay? That will undo your pH. So we have a soil sample where the pH is 6.20. What is a hydronium ion concentration? It's going to be 10 to the negative 6.2. to the negative 6.2. Nobody's confident. Everybody's looking at me. They have a number, but they don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got syntax error. So. Syntax error. Syntax, syntax, syntax error is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say anti-log? Well, it's probably it's pro on your It's probably 10 to the x. So probably the bottom. 6.3. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. So let's think about this. Close to seven. It's close to seven. Yes. And also, it's the, it's on the right side of seven. Is this acidic or basic? It's acidic. 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 If the hydronium ion concentration is what was it? Six. Six point three. Six point three times ten to the negative seven. That's a little bit more than one times ten to the negative seven, which means we're going to have a little bit more hydronium than hydroxide, which means it's going to be acidic. Somebody just got the calculator because I can't find it. Can't think of words. That's the problem I'm having. It's a little hard. Yeah, you can do 10. Yeah, you can also do. Oh, all right. You could do 10 to the negative 6.2. That's how I was trying to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. graphic calculator, I have a, a button that says 10 to the x. I have that too. And when I hit that, it goes 10 and it gives me a parenthesis to put my exponent. I don't know if I'm going to do that. You could just do that and then think it's 6.2. That's how I screwed up. I couldn't think of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Calculator yeah. class. Okay. <laughs> So, oh, there's so many buttons. It's been a long time. So, hey, you all have different calculators, right? <coughs> right? It's on you to make sure that when you come in for the exam or the quiz, that you know how to run your calculator. Right? That doesn't mean you're on your own. It means you can come to me or someone else to help you figure it out. But on that day, you're on your own. <laughs> because I can already see a situation where somebody doesn't know what it, what at all they're supposed to have to do in a problem. They say, "I can't figure out what button where, where the button I need to push," and I stole on the button, and I'm telling them what to do, right? 
So you're on your own. You have to know how to use your calculator. Yeah. So this looks scary. This is this is sort of a helpful <laughs> helpful flow chart. Okay. <laughs> what this is telling you is how you can get from one to the other. Okay. If you're given a pH and you have to find OH minus, you can go from pH to pOH to OH minus, or you can go pH to H3O plus to OH minus. That's what we did. Okay. And then they just show you how you would do each of the conversions. Okay. So you start in one corner and you can get to anywhere. One common thing to do is to give you one of the, th one of the four and make you tell me the rest of the four. So, pH of water, pure water is seven. A lake is not going to be exactly seven. Okay? It's generally slightly acidic. If, some, if a lake is below pH 4.5, it's basically incompatible with life. The lake is dead. Okay? So we went onto a lake. We measured the OH minus concentration because we weren't smart enough to figure well, if we just measured the hydronium ion concentration, we'd make the math easier. Okay? And we also weren't smart enough to take an actual pH meter with us. So we have OH minus concentration. It's this. Is this lake dead? So we're given OH minus concentration. We have to go from one corner, basically, to another to get pH. So I would, the way I would do this is that's an easy one to take a negative log of in your head. So I would go to the pOH. What's the negative log of that? Nine. nine. So my pOH is nine. So my pH is 5. Okay. So is the lake dead? No. No. Wouldn't want to go swimming in it, but it's not dead. Okay. So you can make the math. If you went the other direction, from that, the hydronium ion concentration, the pH, in my opinion, that's harder. I would need a calculator to do that, probably. You just did that. Boom, boom. Right. Take the exponent, make it positive. You got nine. Fourteen minus nine is five. Done. This is what we should have done. We should have used the pH meter. <laughs> a little fancy little thing. You stick it in. Something called an LED screen gives you a number. Okay. It's 1970s technology. Okay. There are pH meters. We have them in lab. You, you, you used one when we were measuring the, the conductivity. That was a pH meter turned into a conductivity meter. Okay. You can switch it back and forth between. Okay. You can also use little, we used a little strip before, didn't we? Uh, didn't we have a, where we had the, the, the roll of pH paper? Okay. And we, we ripped it off and we stuck it in and changed to get like it was green for basic. I remember when that was. Like it was like really short though. Like, was like We definitely, because you were doing it on consumer products. There was definitely pH paper. Yeah. I think I was like in yeah. I don't, I don't remember what lab, it was, but we, we did this, okay? There was a, a roll of pH paper in a little plastic cartridge. You pulled it out, you ripped it off. You put it in the liquid and it changed color. No. I know. I know that we did this. <laughs> I know that I we did this. <laughs> 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 no, it was definitely this semester. Uh, You're going to have to show that, man. The product we had was the flame test. We looked stuff on fire, but that was that was the only color stuff we did. There was another. Yep. I don't recall. There was a bubble cola. No, I've done that. I have not done it in this class. I do not recall doing anything here. Oh, really? Also, don't edit this out. Completely remembering last semester. <laughs> We're all starting to blend together. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All two of them, you know. I'm, I'm just getting old. That's, that's the last thing I've ever done. So you can do the pH meter. 
you need a little piece of paper, or there's also dropper bottle type type things. If anybody did water testing in elementary school where you went out to a river or a lake or something, maybe that's what I'm thinking. You probably a had a little kit like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we also use indicator dots. Phenolphthalein was one of them. We, we did phenolphthalein, didn't we? Yeah, that was the pink one. So, what's it? What it basically is, is you have a molecule, depending on the pH, it's either colored or not colored. Okay. Phenolphthalein, I believe, is pink when it's basic and clear when it's acidic. So I think you had an acidic solution, you put the phenolphthalein in there, it disappeared, and then drip by drip you added sodium hydroxide, and when it turned basic, it was pink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right there, you know, failing acid and colorless. The conjugate base, conjugate base is what you make is bright pink. Okay. So this is what we call a titration. You did a very quick and dirty titration. Okay. I think I've talked. Somebody mentioned that they did an actual titration where it's really careful, drip by drip. Okay. So you would start here. This is one of your durettes, and you go drip by drip by drip, and you add one drip, and it goes from that to that, and then your professor says, you added too much. So then you have to come back, and you have to add a drip of acid to take it from that to that. And then you have to add half a drop to try to get that. Adding half a drop is tough. So you're probably either going to stay that, or you're going to go to that. So then you're going to have to either add a quarter drop of acid to go from that to that, or a quarter drop of base to go from that to that. And you end up banging your head on the desk because you go from that to 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 that. Okay. It took us like two hours. Yeah, I believe it. It's it's tricky. It's really tricky. But there are a whole bunch of these different dots, and they go from different colors. Okay. So if you want, we're doing a titration and you're going to use one of these dyes, you would just go to this chart and you say, what pH am I trying to find? If you want a pH 4, go to pH 4, and you go down, and you find which dyes overlap with pH 4. Methyl orange, kind of 4 is right in the middle, so I would use methyl orange. So in that case, you're looking for a change from red to yellow orange. That's how you do it. OK, so when you're doing that, what you're doing is you're mixing hydrochloric acid, you're mixing, mixing an acid and a base to neutralize each other. Okay? You can calculate how much of a base you need to cancel out or neutralize an acid. A really simple titration neutralization reaction is hydrochloric acid sodium hydroxide, and you get sodium chloride and water. When you mix an acid in a base, you always get a salt and water, period. Acid and base, salt and water, okay? This is as simple as it gets, okay? They get com more complicated in terms of reactions, but with concentrations and mass, it stays the same difficulty. C1, V1 equals C2, V2. It's very, very, very similar to our dilution equation, which was M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Here, C is concentration, molarity, V is volume. <coughs> so if you want an acid, amount of acid that's going to exactly neutralize the amount of base, the concentration of acid times volume of acid equals concentration of base times volume of base. Okay. So here's a, an example. We have I'm going to change this to an easier question. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Cross it out. OK. 
Okay. The new question is going to be, what volume of one molar HCl neutralizes 10.8 milliliters of 3 molar in AOH? So I would say, because we have both concentration and volume of the NaOH, I would just call that number one. Okay? So, so then so it's 10.8 molar NaOH wait, no. three molar, three molar ten point eight milliliters. Okay. Ten point eight milliliters, three molar NaOH, and we are using one molar HCl. So we have C1, V1 equals C2, V2. I'm going to say my sodium hydroxide is number one. It doesn't matter which one is one, which one is two. I'm going to say sodium hydroxide is one. So what is C1? What's three? Three. What is V1? 10.8. Do I have C2? It's the concentration of my acid, which is 1, times V2, which I don't have. Solve for V2. have those two amounts and you mix them together, they will completely neutralize each other and it will be exact. So what would you expect the pH of the resulting solution to be? 7.0. The acid and base completely cancel each other out. We are at 7.0 completely neutral. Here's another one that looks like that. C1, V1 equals C2, V2. What would you say is my C1? Point 0.2. What is my V1? 13.4 liters. 13.4 liters. So I have... Oh, So actually, my concentration the C1 is not 0.2. It's H2SO4. 0.4. Okay. H2SO4, so my concentration of hydrogen is twice that, 0.4. So 0 0.4 times 13.4 equals... Now I have to have either C1, sorry, C2 or V2. Do I have either? No. I have a pH. <laughs> so you can go from a pH to an OH minus concentration. I would suggest going pH to pOH. If my pH is 0.1, it's my pOH. 13.9, 10 to the negative 13.9 is my OH minus concentration.
Yeah. Probably would, wouldn't it? I mean, I got 1.26 to the, I just want to get What's wrong with this? What does it make sense? Something in there doesn't make sense. Oh. Well, KOH wouldn't be pH 0.1? Exactly. KOH is a base. <laughs> pH is 0 0.1 is an acid. Okay. So, let's change that to pH 10. <laughs> So if pH, pH is 10, my pOH is 4, so this, my hydroxide ion concentration, 10 to the negative 4, which is... 0 0.0001 yeah. molar. So that is my C2. 0, 0, 0, 0001 times V2. Solve for V2. Kind of makes sense. This <laughs> well, it, as much sense as an answer that comes out to be fifty-four thousand so liters. A really large number. It'll make sense. <laughs> this 0 0.2 molar H2SO4 is pretty concentrated. That is not concentrated whatsoever. So you have a strong acid and you're neutralizing it with a very, very dilute base. C needs a lot of base. <laughs> um, so moving on. You've heard of buffers. Okay. Buffer is a combination between a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid when they're mixed at roughly the same concentrations. And a buffer is going to prevent large changes in pH. Okay? In our blood, the main buffer system is the bicarbonate buffer system. This is carbonic acid. This is an acid, a weak acid. The conjugate base of that is that, bicarbonate. If these two things are in our blood at about the same concentration, we have a bicarbonate buffer. And that keeps our blood to more or less 7.4. Yeah. If we start here, where we have the same amount of both, we are at 7.4. If we add an acid, what happens is it reacts with our base here to make 
a week passive. Okay. So if I add HCl to this, HCO is a strong acid. After it reacts with that, I now have a weak acid. So I took a strong acid and converted it into a weak acid. A weak acid is not going to have the same effect on the pH as a strong acid would. So basically, it's a change in the pH in the blood. If I take it where I'm equal and I add a base, it's going to react with my acid to make a weak base. I can take a strong base, convert it into a weak base, so that my pH doesn't change much. To be a buffer, remember you have to have either a weak acid or a weak base. If you have a weak acid, you also have to have the conjugate base. If you have a weak base, you have to have the conjugate acid. So our question here is, which of these combinations can you use to make a buffer? So the difference between a conjugate acid and the base that it came from and an acid and its conjugate base are one hydrogen difference. So if you're making a buffer, you need two things that the only difference between them is one hydrogen. Okay? If you look at that, first of all, is all this different one hydrogen? No. And also, you need a weak acid or a weak base. This is a strong acid and a strong base. That is not going to make a buffer. What about this one? Yep. One hydrogen difference. One hydrogen difference. Sodium here replaced that hydrogen. Okay, so if you put this into water with that, this is going to break apart to give CH3CO2 minus, which is the conjugate base of that. Okay. So you're looking for two things. One is a weak acid or a weak base, and the other one can only be different from it by one hydrogen. How about this one? Is that, is that a, a buffer system? Both. Both. Well, this is a strong acid. This is just an ionic compound. So yes, this is going to give you Br minus, which is the conjugate base of that, but this is a strong acid. You can't make a buffer from a strong acid. How do you know it's a strong acid? It's on the chart. <laughs> yeah, it was on that chart, which, which, which I'm not making you remember, but in general, if you have, if you have hydrogen, so hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, Hydroiodic acid are strong. Hydrofluoric, to make things difficult, is not strong. And then there's nitric acid, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid. Yeah, it was said hydrochloric. Phosphoric acid is not technically a strong acid. Would you memorize those two? Would you memorize this? Sorry? Would you memorize those two? Would you do something like this? Or? Well, we have the chart. Right? The chart on the it's not going. But if you see this, it's like as stronger as you go south, right? Um, I'm trying not to give you what's on the exam. It's okay. <laughs> we'll be all right. We'll go ahead. <laughs> We're gonna forget it. Anyway. <laughs> In order to do the, the, the problem like this that you're going to see on the exam, it's going to be very similar to what you see in the quiz, which is very similar to what you see on the homework. Okay, to, to do what's on there, you're not going to. It's not this type of a thing. Is it strong or weak? Okay, you're, you're going to be looking for are they different by one hydrogen? So it actually means there should be hydrogen on both sides. One hydrogen more. Right. This is different by one hydrogen. That has one that has zero. It's just the potassium is twice it. 
But if I can in answer number two, it has hydrogen on both sides, it's just there's one more hydrogen. Right. Here there's three, four, there's three. You're looking for something that, two things that are different by one hydrogen. So three is typically different, so we'd have to memorize that that's a strong answer. That's what I'm getting at, right? Are you, are you on number two or number three? Say number three now. Because you said that that one it is definitely off by one. Right. I guess what I'm trying to say is everything you're going to see on there is going to be weak. So all you need to worry about is is it different by one hydrogen? Okay. So the pH of our body controls a lot of things. If your pH gets off, a whole bunch of weird things happen. Okay. If you can read it, there's headache, sleepiness, confusion, loss of consciousness, coma, seizures, weakness, diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, heart rate, increased heart rate, arrhythmia, coughing, shortness of breath. Bad stuff. Right? Change of pH will cause any of that. Okay. Acidosis is when our blood is too acidic. We get too much hydronium ion. We can control the pH of our blood by our breathing. Okay. Remember in the lab, you blew through the straw into the water. What was the purpose of that? Add carbon dioxide. Adding carbon dioxide. When you added carbon dioxide to the water, did it get more acidic or more basic? More basic. Carbon dioxide makes it acid. More acidic. It gets more acidic. There you go. So, if you can manipulate the CO2 in your blood by your breathing, you can manipulate the pH of your blood. Okay? So, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out CO2. That's going to be key to remember. Okay? If we breathe in CO2, it mixes with water to make carbonic acid. Our body can then break that apart in the hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion. So this is our buffer system. We want it to be here in the middle. If we become acid, ac acidotic, we come too far over here. Okay. When we become next is alkalytic, we're going to have too much of the base. Okay? So, if your pH is too high, do you have too much CO2 or not enough CO2? CO2 is acidic. Too much. Well, how do you think you could change your breathing to get rid of CO2? Deep breaths or faster? You want to ex exhale more, because you exhale CO2. The more you exhale, the more CO2 you're getting rid of. Your pH is coming from acidic back to normal. Okay. So acidosis is pH less than 7.4. 7.4 is normal. There's two types of acidosis. There's respiratory acidosis. So if your acidosis is caused by your breathing, does that mean you're breathing too fast or too slow? Too slow. Too slow. You're not getting rid of the CO2 fast enough. It's building up. You're becoming ac acidotic. Okay? That's respiratory acidosis. There's also metabolic acidosis. We are going to focus on the breathing. That's a whole lot easier to understand. The pH is also controlled very, very strongly by our kidneys. The respiratory control is short term. Kidneys you know, are long term. Kidneys make bicarbonate. Kidneys make base. So kidneys control it long term. If your kidneys are not making enough base, you become acidic. That's metabolic acidosis. Respiratory acidosis is you're not exhaling enough CO2. Metabolic acidosis is you're producing too much 
eight plus because you're not making enough base to go with it. In metabolism, we make proton, we make hydrogen ions. The kidney has to make the bicarbonate base to go with it. Opposite of acidosis is alkalosis. It's pH more than 7.4. The same way there are two types. There's respiratory and metabolic. If you have respiratory alkalosis, are you breathing too fast or too slow? <coughs> too fast. You're getting rid of too much CO2. You're getting rid of your acid, so you're becoming basic. Metabolic, you're either making too much base in your kidneys, or you are not making enough acid in your metabolism. Okay? In this class, I want you to be able to figure out the respiratory part. Don't worry about the metabolic part in terms of quizzes and things. Okay? Be able to know if, you're, if, you're, if you have alkalosis, are you breathing too fast or too slow? If you have acidosis, are you breathing too fast or too slow? If you are have have alkalosis, how can you fix it by breathing? Slow down. You, yeah, you can slow down, or you can keep breathing at the same rate. If you put a paper bag, open up a plastic bag, <laughs> over your mouth, you'll you'll breathe out the CO two, but then you'll breathe it right back in. So what you're inhaling has higher and higher concentration of CO2 at that point. So now you're getting more CO2 into your blood, you can fix it, okay? So focus on the respiratory part, not the metabolic part. If you take biochemistry or probably anatomy physiology, you'll do the whole kidney thing. That's not this class. There are some other buffers in our blood. The second most important one is a phosphate buffer going between phosphoric acid and H2PO4 minus. Also, hemoglobin itself has a little bit of buffering capacity. It's very, very, very minor compared to the phosphate, which is in itself very minor compared to the bicarbonate. Okay? And that is the end. <laughs> that is the end of chemistry. <laughs> The end. I will turn this off.